I am the Void Alchemist, and welcome back to Minecraft. Today we're going to be exploring um, Redstone Creation. This is, I believe, my first Redstone Creation. Um, I've been doing Redstone for quite a while, but I haven't uploaded anything to YouTube because I, I genuinely haven't thought any of it was worth uploading. Also, I don't finish, like, 95% of my projects. Um, yeah, so... Uh, what I have here is uh, a 3x3 three three, uh, slime hipster door. So it's it's fully hipster um, in that none of the blocks are exposed to uh, the surface. I, I guess um, if you count these uh, furnaces that have to be there because um, they have to be movable, you could say it's not hipster, but I, I think this still counts. They're not really redstone related in any manner. Um, I've put up this glass wall so that um, you can see that well, honestly I think it looks better with a wall um, but also uh, glass so you can see through it and uh, glass floor so you can see all the redstone happening. Uh, I've currently got two inputs uh, one on this side and one on that side. You can really put the inputs anywhere you just snake them around with um, a combination of uh, observers and hoppers. The one thing that you have to uh, watch out for is uh, making sure that hoppers aren't touching any part um, of the machine that will actually uh, power the hopper because powering the hopper is what triggers the next observer to activate. Um, yeah, so, but let's, let's get right into it. Um, so if you press the button, uh, a lot of the timing mechanisms start, um, and then, um, uh, so I, I've sort of got this machine divided into two halves. First half responsible for, uh, for these 12 blocks, the six gold blocks, the six top gold blocks, and the six slime blocks behind them. And, uh, since you can't push more than 12 blocks, I had to use the three, uh, a double extender for the three bottom blocks. Um, but also, um, I couldn't have just a simple double extender, uh, for those three bottom gold blocks, because, um, well, because the, uh, the slime blocks, uh, are in the way. Um, you need to pull those gold blocks out of the way in order to be able to pull uh, this section down. So, um, what I ended up doing was having this 3x3 three three wall of pistons there that extends um, in order to uh, get, those, get the double piston extender pushed into place. But that creates another issue, which is with that wall of pistons there, can't actually... Um, you can't actually have the redstone wiring to power the uh, double piston extender in any simple way. So what I've actually done is I've got a triple piston extender down here with an observer facing upwards on top. Um, if you don't know, when an observer is powered, uh, sorry, when an observer uh, is moved by a piston, it releases a one tick pulse. So I use that to do all of the timing on the double piston extender uh, and that's why this triple piston extender circuitry is so large all of the wool the uh sorry all of the um green white uh a little bit of the blue and then uh this light gray i think that's light gray no that's white i lied um, all of the white, uh, and, uh, green and blue, um, is responsible for the triple piston extender to control the timings for the double piston extender. Um, and then all of the quartz section here is responsible for the triple piston extender here that manages the, uh, six top gold blocks. Um, this triple piston extender wasn't exactly simple either. Because, uh, with, um, 
by using 12 blocks in total, you can only really push and extend using this piston here. The rest is just to move this piston around. If you try and power this piston while the um, while the gold blocks are down here, nothing will happen because this piston counts in the uh, blocks being pushed, and that goes over the uh, push limit of 12. So the timings are a bit more complicated. Um, I actually really like using observers now as, uh, in order to get the timings right. I'm not sure if it's the most efficient method, but it got it. Uh, I got it down to a fairly compact design. What it is, um, this this whole machine is 13 by 15 by 10. Um, the 10 is just a handful of blocks, so I'm going to be working on uh, compacting this in the future. But honestly, I need kind of a break. I've spent, you know, upwards of 30 hours on this thing, and I'm, I'm a little burnt out at this point. I'll, I will come back to this project at a later point, though. Um, this orange circuit here and the gray circuit... Um, let's start with the orange circuit. So the orange circuit is responsible for um, timing the two halves of the, of the uh, door. So the, um, I've got an Ethonian, uh, um, uh, hopper timer here, which, um, feeds into this falling edge, um, uh, falling edge detector, um, and then I've got the, uh, redstone leading out here and here, um, Oh, sorry, this leads out down here to here, which powers this piston going up and powers the gray circuit, uh, but it also leads up this way into this piston, which powers this gray circuit. So the gray circuits are uh, just really pulse extenders, so basically when I designed each half of the, uh, the piston extender, I, I did so with a stone button, and they only really function using the pulse length of a stone button, which is 10. 10 ticks, so the gray circuits just make sure that whatever pulse you, whatever pulse length you put into it, it outputs a pulse length of 10 ticks. Um, so uh, here's the door opening again. Um, obviously, it's pretty slow and very much not compact, but you know what? It works. I'm happy with it, and. Um, And, and I think that's... It's okay that it's not perfect. I, I scoured all of YouTube and the internet to try and find a, three, a good 3x3 three three, uh, hipster door, but I, I wasn't able to find any reasonable, reasonably sized ones that um, still work in 1.12.1. Um, I did see a couple that were around this size. I just thought I could do better. <laughs> um, so, uh, I guess I'll go over the uh, subsections of this circuit now. So starting with the quartz section, that's the first section I worked on. Uh, the original design was a lot closer to this. I was about 95% done with making this circuit work when uh, I added this circuit to finish it and it ended up breaking a bunch of stuff, and I uh, ended up deciding that this was not nearly compact enough for um, for my taste, uh, and it also mainly relied on repeaters for redstone timing, uh, so I decided to redesign it and ended up at this, um, this d device, this is the one that is uh, in there. Um, I'm not going to include that block in the dimensions, but it's um, because it, it's just used as an input. Uh, but without that stone button, it's one, two, three, four, five, six by six by th uh, three, I guess. Not extended. Of course, it'll go higher than that when these blocks are out, but 
Um, all it does really is... Extend pistons that push observers into the, pl into the right place to uh, push these pistons um, in and out of uh, place at the proper moment. Uh, the reason this piston is here is because uh, I believe that piece of redstone there needs to push this middle piston, but uh, it, um, I, I guess because it's powering the block beneath it, it prefers to power this, this third, this bottom piston here, uh, which messes up the timings. So what I do, what I have here is a torch on the main input line, which retracts this piston. So that one's out of the way for the uh, initial extension. Um, you can see it there, at which point um, you can see it get to work. Uh, the reason the uh, extension looks so weird is because the extension and retraction are actually the exact same uh, pattern, um, except for one thing, which is at the very peak of it, once that piston is extended, uh, I use this piston to push up this observer so that it powers this block so that when the top piston is located where this slime block is, it uh, puts out a, uh, a it, um, sorry, this observer puts out a one tick pulse, um, which either sends out the 12 block um, grouping or retracts it. Um, so it, it sort of acts like a uh, T flip flop, I believe in that it, it activates the retraction every other um, time it gets powered. Um, this is the gray circuit here. There are uh, several, several other ways to do this, but uh, what I've done is set up a demonstration showing that uh, the pulse length is the same from a stone button going through uh, five, tick, five ticks of delay um, to the gray circuit I have in there. Um, adding repeaters doesn't actually add any uh, pulse length to signals longer than four ticks, apparently, so that's useful to know. Um, so that's the basic concept there. I've got uh, this on a stable circuit generating a one tick, uh, sorry, a four tick pulse, um, which goes into this block powers this redstone, uh, but it also powers this repeater, so that four ticks later, uh, this block gets powered, which means that this redstone still gets powered, so now it's at eight ticks, and then this repeater gets powered um, by this repeater, so that two ticks after this one uh, is done powering this block, this block gets powered for a total of ten ticks. Um, and that gets us to our 10 tick pulse. Uh, and you can see these pistons move at the exact same time. So, um, the orange circuit took uh, quite a bit more work than I was expecting because the two halves need to function on a. Um, in, uh, in an alternating order, like, like an abigate. Uh, achieving that is a lot harder than I thought it would be uh, when I when I require such huge delays. You can see some prototype designs over here. None of those ended up working. I decided to go with an, uh, a hopper clock. Uh, so what this does is you input there, and then it'll instantly power one of them. And uh, depending on how many items you have in here, it will... Uh, push that redstone block across, and then back, and then once that piston gets unpowered, we'll send a four tick pulse, I believe. Yeah, four tick pulse through this redstone wire. And then when you power it again, this one gets um, uh, instantly powered. The same thing happens. Um, the pulse gets sent through this redstone wire here. And uh, the way that works is I have this sticky piston 
getting powered by a one tick pulse, shooting out the redstone block or pulling it back. The redstone block alter um, alternates powering this redstone line and this redstone line. So that covers the, um, the instant powering. And then I have the one tick pulse generated by, sorry, the four tick pulse generated by, um, by this uh, falling edge detector here, um, powering both of the lines. So this one is already powered, um, so nothing happens, and then this one gets the four tick pulse. So the, the pulse actually goes through both of them, it just doesn't affect this one because it's already powered. Next. Um, I think, I think that's it for now. The, um, the wool work is not, not the greatest, I'm going to be honest. Um, as I said before, I'm going to work on compacting it and making sure um, I, I might redesign some of these circuits to get it into a smaller space. I think I might be able to combine the gray and orange circuits. Um, also, right now, getting the inputs into uh, the right place is a little bit more difficult than I would like. Um, especially if you don't want to leave the boundaries of this box. So, I'm going to be working on that in the future. If you guys want to see a block-by-block -block tutorial, um, I will show it to you, but um, I'm not going to release any video unless... I'm not going to release that video unless you guys actually want to see it, because... Honestly, I, I don't know myself how to build this thing block-by-block -block, uh, off the top of my head. That's going to be a hell of a lot of editing. Um, and I think I would be better off making other videos. Um, so if, if you guys really want, if you guys genuinely want to see that, of course I will release a video of it. Um, but if you guys don't want to see it, then I'll skip it. No reason for me to do that. Um, so, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, let me know what you think of doing redstone videos, because I love redstone, and I'd like to uh, make more in the future. So, um, don't forget to comment, subscribe, let me know what you guys think. Thanks. Bye.